April 5th, 1994. April 5th is coming up on us, and that is the anniversary of Kurt Cobain's suicide. Kurt Cobain is one of the first well-known public figures that affected a generation that also took their life that is very, very unique. Uh, I was a huge Nirvana fan. My name is Eric. If you're new to my channel, hit that like and subscribe button. It's all mental health, mental illness, suicide awareness, sobriety, having a little bit of fun. But making sure that nobody goes it alone. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a therapist. I lost a wife and a father to suicide. I'm a recovering addict with alcohol and cocaine. And I'm diagnosed with ADHD, PTSD, GAD, and MDD. I was a huge Nirvana fan. In fact, it was the first cassette that I ever bought on my own. Uh, 1994, I was 14 years old. And here's an a individual, extremely talented, extremely gifted, battling with addiction and ultimately takes his life by a gunshot in 1994. That was the first of somebody who was so impactful that the world a little bit stopped and went, wow, what is going on? And it's really unique because if you look back in 1994 with that, so much more of it was based on conspiracy theories and so much of it was based on addiction and not really addressing the fact of suicide. I mean, suicide is the 10th leading cause of death in the United States. Suicide is also the second leading cause of death in teenagers. It is the first leading cause of death in males 25 to 45 years old. That's how serious suicide is. Now you mix an addiction. I'm an addict. I know what it's like. I mean, we are numbing ourselves for whatever reason just to try and escape the reality that it's, it's a deadly mix. Even getting sober as an addict and trying to live life again can totally mess with you. I've, I've been there. In, in September 2018, I tried to attempt suicide. The strongest thing I ever did was continue to live when I wanted to die. Kurt Cobain was this first person that this generation of punk, grunge, just dominating force of music, which let's face it, I'm a huge music nut. I love music. Music is one of my biz biggest escapes. Uh, I turn to music a lot. Him taking his life was the, was the first time that it shocked the whole the whole music industry, but but also this age group that never really talked about suicide. This was the first time that you started having the friends check. Uh, you started hearing a lot more about addiction and the harms of, of heroin, of, of drugs, and it really forced it into the news. It still does now today, but in a lot of cases, what we see is, you know, people will share the suicide hotline, they'll, they'll share that, and they feel that they've done their part, and that alone does help. But one of the biggest things is the human connection. Kurt Cobain shows that it doesn't matter how much money you have, how well of an artist you are, how popular you are, how famous you are, any of that. Whatever it is that you're going through up here dominates it all. And it's not addressed in the sense that it needs to be. People are, are very uncomfortable, very stigmatic about talking about suicide. And let's face it, it's not a great subject to talk about. It is a subject that you almost want to sweep under the rug. But it's a subject that we have to talk about, we need to talk about, because there are so many people out there suffering silently. That is a great example of every time one of these anniversaries passes, that it is that chance and that opportunity to talk to your friends and who's out there struggling. Because when you, especially you're mixing uh, any kind of drug, I mean, it, alcohol was one of my big addictions. When you are drinking, it, you feel that it, it's numbing you, you feel happy a little bit, but it is a depressant and it drags you the other way. He died by a gunshot. I mean, this is also why I don't have guns in the house because when I was heavily addicted to alcohol, I was drinking about three fifths of vodka a day. I would have blown my brains out. I already know that. And that was why I never kept guns because I got so miserable inside my head that I just wanted the pain to stop. I wanted the hurting to stop. I wanted it to go away. And I felt that it would never get better. It's this hopeless feeling, this, this despair feeling, this pain that is extremely difficult to explain to somebody what you're going through. And the hindsight's always 2020. You you see here of, of all these people that all these people reaching out saying, Why didn't he reach out to us? We could have got him help. I would have been there for him. This was a friend of mine. That's how suicide works. I mean, the people that are struggling, the people that are suffering, wear the biggest smiles. You can't tell the pain that they're going through. Because they cover it up because they don't want anyone else to feel the same pain that they're feeling. I mean, if you look at Chester Bennington, the la one of the last videos of him is him laughing with his family, having fun playing a game. Yet later on, just a, a short time period after, he takes his life. 
That is what suicide's about. And, and it comes down to finding that human connection and sharing and being able to release those emotions and knowing that there is hope and that there is therapy, that there's medication, that there's so many different tools out there to use. But when we're at that point, it's extremely, extremely paralyzing. And it's not a coward's way out. It's an ending the pain way out when we feel that we're not good enough, we're not worth reaching out to. And that's why if you want to make a difference in somebody's life, be their friend, get them to open up, get them to share. And it doesn't matter who it is. And it's usually the people that you think have it all. I mean, look at, look at Kate Spade, look at Anthony Bourdain, look at these other individuals out there who appear to have it all in life. You have fame, wealth, fortune. I mean, what are most of the people fighting for in life? That's what they're fighting for. And they think it's going to bring them this happiness. You achieve it and all of a sudden it doesn't. And all of a sudden it brings isolation. It brings loneliness. It brings more of this. The more that we're left alone with our own brain and we're not sharing our thoughts and we're not getting out our thoughts, we start to believe them. And the more that we believe our thoughts, the more of a reality it becomes. And my dad was a successful doctor and he ended up taking his life because the pain got too much. He didn't reach out because it wasn't his place to reach out. I, 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 but it was the same way. I didn't want to reach out because I didn't want to bring anyone down is what I felt. Yet it, the strongest thing you can do is ask for help. And the most amazing thing you can do is receive the help and actually take the help when it's given to you and not shy away from it and not feel that you don't deserve it, that it's not for you and that you don't, you don't belong. Cause that's not the case. That's what your brain's going to say to you. And that's how your brain's going to lie to you, but you're an amazing human being and you've got to know your worth. So reach out. I mean, use these different examples, these different times that come around to remind yourself that you are worth it and that it is okay to ask for help. And one of the strongest things you can do, if you're not comfortable asking for help, write a letter to your loved ones. Not a, not a passing letter, not a goodbye letter, but a here's what I'm struggling with letter to get the communication to open up. A majority of the time, nobody around you knows that you're suffering because you're doing it internally. You might think that they know and that they don't care, but that's our brain just playing tricks on us. The more that we communicate, the more that we share, the more that we'll get the help that we need, the more that we'll realize that we aren't alone, and the more that people will be there for us and we'll see humanity take place. You are unbelievable because you've made it through 100% of your worst days. And I understand one in four people struggle with a mental illness. You know, it's unfortunate that we have a reminder in April of Kurt Cobain's death. But in a way, it's an angel in disguise that was the start of bringing awareness to suicide. And the amount of deaths that it has saved, it, it, you can't count the number. I mean, it gives me goosebumps thinking about because you can't count the number. And it's almost a, a martyr situation where you have a young generation that had learned that it was okay to start talking about suicide, to start talking about and sharing about this, that it's not something for attention, that if you are struggling to open up, and I hope that everybody realizes that with it, that it is okay to open up. It's okay to talk about it. It's okay to share and that you're not judged. And finding the right support is everything. That's why I do what I do. And that's why I'm very passionate about it because I don't want anyone to get a phone call saying that your wife took their life or that your, your dad took their life because you're never going to get them back. You're never going to get to say, I love you one more time. You're never going to get to say you matter one more time. And that's everything. That is everything. And believe me that you are loved. If you haven't hit the like and subscribe button, hit the like and subscribe button, comment down below. And it's it comes down to just my goal to build and bridge the gap between a crisis hotline and therapy of just sharing all the tools and experiences and resources that we can to throw out those little reminders that you matter. In the description box below, I have links to all my different social medias. I even have a link down below to the things on Amazon that I use like fidget cubes, fidget spinners, things that I use to help with my anxiety. I even have a link down below for better help because it's trial and error to find out what works for you. And when you find what works for you, it makes such a difference. You're a bamf. You're a badass motherfucker. You made it through 100% of your worst days to make it through two today. Most of all, you got this. So hit that like and subscribe button. Let's do this together.